Okay. I think we're recording now, so I think you've got to accept that. Yep. Did it. And welcome everybody to the Tuesday Team Talk. We're doing this recorded on Zoom. Sorry, it's not live, but those are just the breaks of technology sometimes. And today we have Andy Robbins of Metagenics. And oh goodness, how long have we been with Metagenics? I think you and I have known each other for at least 25 years. Uh, I think I got acquainted with you when you were still with Dr. Sipples uh, down in Berea, Kentucky. I believe that's correct. Oh, then that's 95. You're, you're looking at 27 years now. Yeah. Wow. I forgot we met down in Berea. Holy moly. Yes, it has been. And uh, that, that's funny because Dr. Sipple actually was the guy who I started with, and I was there about six months helping while his son completed school. And then um, I moved up here, and Andy is actually, for those of you that don't know Andy Robbins, who is with Metagenics, he's one of the people that actually educated me early on in functional medicine at that time I really didn't have a, an interest in nutrition did I <laughs> <laughs> well it's definitely evolved over the years uh, and uh, it's your interest has kind of ebbed and flowed and and uh, as you've been exposed to more things of course uh, your interest has increased and your knowledge has increased so I've really been impressed with uh, your journey and where you've arrived at, to where you are right now with your level of expertise and knowledge. So I've, it's really been fun to watch. So how did you get started with Metagenics? Goodness, well, this goes back to uh, 1993. Um, maybe a little bit of backstory leading up to that will be pertinent because I was raised in sort of a health conscious home. Uh, my mother was a, a pill popper and I'm by pill popper, I mean vitamins. And uh, so she kind of raised us to be a little bit more aware of you know, what we take into our bodies. So I kind of had that upbringing. And then I got into uh, personal training after college. So um, there's always been a focus in my life toward the betterment of health, not only from a, a perspective of what we put into our bodies, but also with how we care for our bodies with exercise, that nature. And then um, I, uh, I, I got married and decided that being a personal trainer wasn't going to pay the bills the way I wanted. So I uh, wasn't going to be able to raise a family on that kind of income, although I enjoyed doing that. And so as I was looking through the classifieds, I saw this, this ad for something that I didn't think was legit. It looked like something maybe multi-level, but I went to a, a meeting where the CEO of the company introduced the concept and, um, and I guess the rest is his history from there. So uh, once I found out that it was a legit business, that it was a legit business model, uh, working within the, the field of uh, functional medicine among holistic and integrated practitioners, well, that was right up my alley. And so um, um, that was 1993. I've been with uh, Metagenics ever since. I've never ventured off that path because they're such a fabulous company. And they've been uh, wonderful at educating me. So that was 28 years ago. Uh, so it's been a fun journey. Who was the CEO at the time? Well, the CEO of Metagenics Midwest, which is a distributorship of Metagenics Inc. It was and still is Jim Shaddle. Jim, okay. I've met Jim a couple of times at some of the, the conferences. So mm -hmm. um, what people may not know um, is functional medicine. Who, who early on was one of the primary formulators for Metagenics? Well, our, our chief science officer for a long time was Dr. Jeffrey Bland, and he is considered still to this day the grandfather of functional medicine. He's a biochemist, brilliant, brilliant man, and uh, so we leaned on him very heavily uh, throughout the years, and he's 
in his mid seventies now. So he's mostly retired. He still works with us as an advisor, but he's not the chief science officer any longer, but early on and, and really throughout our history up until the last several years when he retired, uh, Jeff Bland has been someone who we've leaned on heavily and he's had a huge influence not only on us, but also functional medicine at large in the entire industry. So he's been a huge influencer in this field. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think he and Sid Baker are who the Institute for Functional Medicine actually, they coined everything to those guys. And uh, Dr. Bland is right. it's pretty amazing. Do you know what his new thing is now in his retirement? No, I haven't been keeping it up. Buckwheat. Oh, is that right? Okay. Yeah, we've actually had it. Yeah. We make pancakes out of it. It's so good. Hmm. Okay. It's got a full amino acid profile and you get your fiber and everything else from it. So, but it's very interesting. He, he is still in the functional medicine space, but he's not formulating products. Now he's looking at like, how can we get this from food as much as, as much as we can? Because as you will talk to this point, what, why should we take a supplement? Okay. Well, that's a great question. So, and follow uh, that up with, follow that up with, is there a difference in supplements? Okay. Well, yeah. So let, let me, let me address that first question because that's a very common question. Um, so, um, should I wait on him to nope. answer or keep on rolling? Keep on rolling. Okay. So, okay, um, okay. So Jessica, the, the answer to that question is, you know, if our food quality was still the same as it was a hundred years ago or so, uh, we probably wouldn't need to supplement. Uh, but our environment has changed dramatically in the last 100 years. Our, our, our food quality uh, because of our farming methods, our modern farming methods has changed the food quality. And of, and of course, not just farming methods, but also uh, the packaging of foods and the, the processing of foods. We, we live in a culture now where the food quality and the nu nutritional value of foods has fallen dramatically. Um, and even if you compare uh, foods that's, that's grown organically with food that um, is um, food that's processed or, or, or um, grown commercially, uh, we see a huge variance. There's something like 900% uh, more nutritional value in or organically grown and raised foods compared to foods that are grown commercially. <clears throat> so if you were eating 100% organic, maybe you wouldn't have to supplement, but no one does that. And also we have to factor in the fact that there are so many toxic insults to um, you know, our lives these days from our environment to well, going back to the food that we eat. There's a, tons of toxins and processed foods as well. So, uh, our, but our environment, that's a huge factor right there <clears throat> because there's so many toxins in our environment now that didn't exist 100 years ago. So I liken it to this. If you were to put a really heavy load in your automobile and drive it uphill against the wind for a long period of time, what's going to happen to the, the performance and the fuel demands of that vehicle. Well, the performance is going to go down the, and the fuel demands are going to go up, right? And the same is true with our bodies. When you put a, a heavy toxic burden on the body, then the performance goes down and the, uh, the need for certain nutritional substances goes up. That's the world that we live in now. So uh, we're under heavy amounts of stress compared to even a few decades ago. We're on a, under a tremendous amount of environmental burden and so that causes the nutritional requirements of the body to go up and our, the performance of the body without those nutrients to go down. So that's why we need to supplement now because our, our modern farming methods and our modern methods of producing and distributing food um, is just not cutting it in terms of the nutritional value of our foods. And then again, exacerbated by the demands of the nutritional values that we need to be taking in. So since we can't rely on our food uh, these days to, uh, again, unless you're eating 100% organic, and then again, nobody does that. So if you can't eat 100% organic, and if you 
can't live in a stress-free or mo moderately stress uh, environment, then you need to supplement. So, and, and the research on this is, is very, very clear that when you begin to take in a high amounts of certain substances, it changes the body's performance. It causes the performance to go up, the function to get better, and the toxicity to go down. Our body deals with the toxicity better when we have higher amounts of these nutritional substances. Okay, so uh, that's literally a, a bullet point kind of answer to what could be a, a literal lecture. But let me go to uh, the second part of your question, which is the differences in supplements. Well, the FDA doesn't require, uh, doesn't, uh, um, they don't, they don't modify or, or, or monitor, I should say, this industry. Um, the FDA doesn't require the kind of standards in our industry that they do in the pharmaceutical industry. Um, and that's a good news, bad news story. We, we don't really want the FDA involved in this industry like they would be in the pharmaceutical industry because if they, if they were involved to that degree, you would need a prescription to get high potency vitamin C for Pete's sake or black cohosh or whatever the case may be. And we don't want that. Fatty acids. Exactly. Um, but the downside of that scenario is that since the FDA doesn't really have that many requirements regarding um, food supplements, every schlocky company in the world can come along and create a really good looking product in terms of the packaging and the labeling and, and the ad advertising, what have you, but have absolutely zero scientific scrutiny in those products. And one prime example of that in, in uh, 2015, the New York State Attorney Gen General took four supplement distributors to task for fraudulently labeled products. So it was Costco, Walgreens, I think Walmart maybe was in there. There was four of them. I don't remember all four. But what they did is they, they, they bought 70 different herbal products off the shelves and had them analyzed for content versus label claim. And what they found is that not a single one of those herbal products met label claim, not one. And not only that, is many of those products didn't turn up any of the herb that was claimed on the label, but instead, get this, what they had in them instead of the herb that was claim, uh, claimed on the label was uh, rice powder and of all things, house plants. Really? <laughs> yes, house plants. So that that's documented. That was 2015. The New York State Attorney General. That's what their findings showed. Uh, so th this is a, a very schlocky industry. I mean, it's terribly schlocky. So to trust your health and your biochemistry to something that you're going to be putting in your body on a regular basis, you better know how it's made. You better know what's in there. Because not only can it be something very different than what's claimed on the label, but it can also be toxic. We know that in the case of calcium, as an example, calcium is notorious for lead contamination. Herbs are notorious for all kinds of different contaminants. Um, even um, uh, there's been pharmaceutical traces of pharmaceutical drugs found on many herbs. So you've got to know what you're taking and you've got to know the due diligence of the company that you're doing business with so that you have confidence in what you're putting in your body. One of the reasons why the nutritional industry has kind of become known as a schlocky, and well, it is a schlocky industry, but uh, one of the reasons why you see all these headlines saying that, you know, echinacea doesn't work or fish oil doesn't work. Well, it's probably because they pulled some schlocky product off the shelf and used that in the research. That's probably why it didn't work. And we also know that a lot of those so-called research studies are not even designed very well anyway. They know the outcome um, before they even do the study. So it's a, you know, a lot of it is fraudulent research as well. So anyway, I mean, I know that we have limited time here today and I could literally do a lecture on those two questions alone, but I want to turn it back over to you. Hopefully that answers your question. Well, I want to, one of the, in my process of growth with you and Metagenics and and through time with the Institute for Functional Medicine and whatnot, one of the things that you told me, and I'm pretty sure, you, I think you heard it from Bland, was the solution to pollution is dilution. 
Mm -hmm. And back to your your idea of, you know, uh, plants like um, cannabis. You know, everybody is jumping on the CBD bandwagon now. You know, right. if you don't have a reputable product with that, that plant is a filter. It will pull everything into its body and you will consume that. Yeah. And so like Metagenics and, and you guys... How do you guys, did I miss this when I was adjusting the patient? How do you guys make sure you're, what should people look for, especially when, um, and what do you guys have that basically these other companies don't? Well, it's, it's first of all, it's very difficult to know just based upon reading a label um, or even reading someone's website, what the quality control is because anybody can uh, claim anything and they do. I mean, there, no company is going to say, oh, we have, we, we have products that are mediocre. Nobody's <laughs> going to say that. That's not marketing, is it? <laughs> no. I mean, everybody's going to say we have the best, highest quality products on the market. Everybody says that. Uh, but the proof is in the pudding. So what is the pudding then, so to speak? These are questions that even a lot of doctors don't know to ask. Uh, are you doing third-party laboratory assays on every single batch of every product? Hardly anyone does that. Why? Because it's too expensive and the FDA doesn't require it. That's why. So why would you do that if the FDA doesn't require it? You can just invest that money back into marketing or put it in your, in your pocket. Uh, uh, Third-party laboratory assays are very expensive. And to do it on every single batch of every product, no one does that. Well, except for Metagenics. I've been doing this for 28 years. I, I know what's out there in terms of a, a lot of our competitors and a lot of the products that, we, that uh, we compete against. And no one's doing this. Secondly, certificate of analysis that's available to not only the practitioner, but also the general public. If you go to Metagenics website, click on quality, a little box will come up where you can enter the lot number of any Metagenics product that you have. You can look at the lot number on the label, enter that lot number into the box on the quality page of the website and their certificate of analysis or the COA will come up and show you everything that's been analyzed and the results of that analysis. So you can see the levels of lead and see if they're within a safe uh, ranges, uh, arsenic, et cetera. So you can not only look at toxins, but also um, the, the label, what's in there versus label claim in terms of B6 or magnesium or whatever else is in there. So the, the, the certificate of analysis on every single batch of every product and uh, having that available to the general public as well as the practitioners is a very, very high quality standard, of course, of, uh, you, you know, you, you want to be... Um, you want to have a high degree of um, visibility in that regard. Yeah. And you guys do most of it or all of it post-tableting, right? Correct. So now with, with assaying, now you mentioned fish oil a moment ago. Now fish oil is one of those substances that requires several assays throughout the manufacturing process. And then another set of assays post encapsulation. So with fish oil, it's such a, such a potentially volatile and even sometimes toxic substance, depending on where you get it, that you, you, there's a series of assays or analyses that have to be done throughout that manufacturing process. But you're correct that um, a, a good assay has to be done post tableting or post encapsulation to know what you've got. Uh, another standard, by the way, that no one does um, well, except for Metagenics, is uh, we do um, research studies on finished products. So this is more like what drug companies are required to do with their drugs. They have to do uh, research studies on the finished drug in a real clinical setting with real patients with real problems to determine the outcome. And that's what Metagenics does with our products. The FEA doesn't require this. This is a self-imposed standard of quality. So we will take a product, we will analyze it. We have, have something called the Functional Medicine Research Center, which is um, where all this research takes place. It's a real clinic with real doctors and scientists. We bring in real patients with real health problems, and we uh, take those finished products and apply them in that setting. And then, of course, we report on the results. So, so again, this no one does this. That's, and that's one of the reasons why I've stuck with Metagenics for, you know, 
30 years now. So it, it's been incredible. What's, what are some of the amazing things that you have seen? Because I know you've used the products personally. Sure, yeah. And what are some of the things? Now, everybody, this is anecdotal. <laughs> this is not a, this is an N of one and the N is Andy and what he has seen. <laughs> yeah. So are you asking me what I've seen out of the field or me personally or both? All of the above. Okay. Well, uh, for me personally, you know, I'm 56 years old now and um, I have a level of activity that, uh, and I should preface these statements by saying I take a ridiculous amount of supplements. I mean, it's, it's kind of ridiculous, but uh, I, I have to look at my, my level of health at 56 years old and my level of activity at 56 years old and say, those supplements have had, had to have had something to do with that over the last 28 years. I often like to, you know, boast a little bit that uh, you might have a 15 year old son who's an aspiring quarterback and uh, he's being raised as an only child right now because his two siblings are, are 10 and 12 years older than him. So they're moved out and married. So he's left behind to be raised as an only child. So guess who his, his wide receiver is that he practices on? Well, that's me. And I'm 56 years old and, and able to do this. And I, I we were out uh, uh, throwing the ball the other day and I was running pass patterns for him and I stumbled a little bit and he kind of made fun of me. And I said, hey, listen, um, do you know how many 56 year olds are able to do this with their sons? Almost none. <laughs> um, and so uh, when you turn 56 and you're you're able to do this sort of thing at this level of activity, then you, then you, you can make fun of me. So at any rate, I have to believe that what, what I've done over the years in terms of my level of supplementation and exercise and eating right has uh, enabled me to do that. Um, I will give you one specific supplement that, uh, that has really changed things for me, it was a game changer. Um, it was the first part of last year where um, it, it, the weather had turned warm again. And uh, I wasn't as active as I usually am throughout the winter. And uh, so uh, my son, Drew, and I uh, got out there to, you know, run some pass patterns. And, you know, I really hit it. I really went for it. And, man, my knees were lit up afterward. And I, I hurt for weeks after that. I thought, my, my goodness, the, the old arthritis bug has set in. And my, my dad always predicted that. He said, you know, us Robbins is, you know, we've always had trouble with arthritis. So, I mean, he's got widespread arthritis. And so I thought, oh my goodness, well, here we go. And I've never had problems with my knees, but now, now they're hurting and, and, uh, and I'm not able to, you know, you know, just bending down to pick some, something up off the floor. I'm like, oh my gosh, this went on for a long time. So I hit a product called Osteovantive really heavily. Oh, I and that. yeah, now it took me a while. Um, it took about six months uh, between that and, and, and dosing up my fish oil it took a while. I didn't notice a difference for a while, but then I, you know, kind of woke up one day and I realized, um, wait a minute, my knees don't hurt. I mean, they don't hurt at all. Um, and so uh, even though it took a while, um, it really has made a huge difference and they haven't hurt since. Do you know what your omega-3 level is? I have not had it measured. No, but I take a lot of fish oil, um, especially now more so that I've had some joint issues. So that in osteovantive has really made a huge difference. Osteovantive that has the <clears throat> boswellia in it, doesn't it? Is that the or is that the bromelain? That's the undenatured type two collagen. So that is literally a rebuilder of joint material. So, oh. yeah. So it's it would fall into the category of the coast. It's not sulfur bearing, so it's a little bit different. It had a different mechanism compared to them, to those substances. Uh, and some research shows that it works even better than glucosamine and chondroitin for joint health. So because you're helping to rebuild joint material, it does take a while. You don't get an immediate anti-inflammatory effect from that. But what you're seeing is improvement of joint function over time because you're helping to rebuild the chondrocytes, the, 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 the joint tissue. So uh, I've had really, really good success personally with that product and throughout the field as well. But in terms of what I'm seeing out in the field, my goodness, 28 years of, of uh, seeing people's lives change through metabolic detoxification with our ultra clear products or um, changing uh, the life changing effects of uh, addressing adrenal health as an example. 
know, I've seen this over and over again. So, uh, you know, the proof is in the pudding, as they say. And although a lot of this is, as you said, anecdotal, the proof is certainly in the pudding. When you see somebody's life changed because they started taking an adrenal product and now they have energy again, where they didn't have energy for six or seven or eight years, or you see somebody suddenly get out of widespread body pain because they did a metabolic detoxification program, you become a believer. <laughs> That's what the, um, the Institute for Functional Medicine talks. They're not allowed to talk about products during the classes, but once you get away from the classes and you're talking to the doctors, um, Ultra Clear Renew is something that they all absolutely rave about. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, ah, here, here's the zinger question. If there was any one thing you could change to make the biggest impact on people, so on the population, mm -hmm. what would that be? Um, it doesn't have to be nutrition. It's yeah. Well, <clears throat> um, I go back to diet. I think that um, a lot of people, um, <clears throat> pardon me, a lot of people will try to take supplements to compensate for a really crappy diet. And while that does help, um, I think the best scenario is for people to eat better and exercise. If they would do those two things, <clears throat> that would literally change their health. And, and, and But, you know, <laughs> I like to jokingly say that it's sometimes easier to ch change a person's religion than it is their diet or their political leanings than there is their, their diet. You know, and, and the people's level of knowledge about what good eating is, is horrible. Um, so there's one documentary. Yeah, there's one documentary that I really recommend called Food Matters. So if you can go to, on Netflix or wherever else and, and, and watch Food Matters, that <clears throat> right there is potentially life changing. For people uh, once they really understand the impact that food can make on their health positively or negatively. And then as a result of, of bad food choices, then people start getting sick and they load up with pharmaceuticals. And, uh, you know, they just chase around symptoms, but simply add to the toxic load that the body is under. And a lot of times you have to take a second drug to deal with the side effects of the first drug and, and on so on goes the process. Sometimes I've seen people on a dozen different drugs and they feel horrible. That's not unusual. We have people come in here with 12, 17. I mean, I would say on average. Grocery uh, bags. Yeah. Yeah. It's unbelievable. But to your point on that food matters. And this is something people should really think about. If it doesn't matter what you eat, then why do you take ibuprofen, Tylenol? Right. <clears throat> what why do you take this little itty bitty pill by mouth right because it's the same root and they say that people will get a um how many tons of food in their lifetime and that's an order of magnitude more than what the pills will weigh so it matters it's it's right. just the difference between going by the bank and putting a dollar in the bank every day right. or trying to hit the lottery yeah. You know, there's an interesting scripture that speaks to this. It's uh, in the book of Psalms, and uh, it says, there is an, um, when you sit to dine with a ruler, know well what is set before you, and put a knife to your throat if you're given to gluttony. Do not crave his delicacies, because that food is deceptive. So we can learn a huge lesson from this. What does that mean? Well, uh, uh, the first part of that scripture is when you sit to dine with a ruler. Now, back when that scripture was written um, circa 4,000 years ago by King Solomon, it was uh, only the rulers and the wealthy and the dignitaries that ate the very rich foods. So therefore, they got the diseases of kings and queens, so-called. What were those diseases? Well, obesity, for one, but all the things that come with obesity, joint pain, cancer, heart disease, um, you know, the diabetes. 
<laughs> yes, gout, you know, are, all of those things. So, uh, and the commoners didn't get those things. The commoners who ate, you know, fresh fruits and vegetables that they grew themselves and wild game, they didn't get those kinds of diseases. Well, fast forward 4,000 years, we live in a nation now where everybody eats like a king and a queen. So everybody has the diseases of kings and queens. So to go back to that scripture, then uh, when you sit to dine with a ruler, note well what's set before you and put a knife to your throat if you're given the gluttony. Do not crave his delicacies because that food is deceptive. Well, what's deceptive about food? Looks good, tastes good, smells good, but is not good for you. you so if I, yeah, so if I could change one thing to your question, if I could change one thing that I think would make the biggest impact on people, it's how they eat. Now, again, if you want to continue your, your you know, your crappy dietary choices and take some supplements to try to circumvent that, that will work to a certain degree, but there's certain things that it won't work for. You've got to change the diet in order to deal with some of these things. So that would be my biggest thing. I'm with you there. Well, I, we will pick up on some of your bullet points that, that really need to be Taught, taken and expanded upon. Um, hopefully, we can get you into uh, StreamYard, and that will allow us to have a panel and a, and a back and forth so people can ask questions or ah. at least ask questions later. So okay. This has been recorded, so thank you very much for your time, okay. Andy. And for My pleasure. All your time in multiple, multiple ways. Yeah, I'm, I'm always uh, happy to help. So appreciate the work that you all do as well. So thank you for serving your community as well. So if I can be of any other assistance, let me know. Thanks, Andy. Thank you. Okay, take care. Bye, Bye now. I, oop, I don't know. Zoom, I'm not real good with Zoom. I might still be recording. <laughs>